I build the ultimate kayak rack and learn a really important lesson along the way. I also use a new product that replaces concrete and I nearly suffer a major injury. You don't wanna miss this. Our current kayak storage system isn't working. See how we just pile them on one side of the dock? It's a waste of space and it looks bad. There are two major problems with making a storage rack for these kayaks. First, hand digging holes in rocky soil littered with tree roots just sucks. And second, I hate mixing heavy, dirty bags of concrete to set posts in the ground. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get out of digging holes. If you have to dig holes by hand and you do encounter roots, I recommend using some garden shears to cut them out. Do you ever overcomplicate things, hoping they will turn out better in the end? I know I do. My goal for this project was to keep things simple and end up with a kayak rack that would make my neighbors jealous. You'll get to judge if I meet this goal or not at the end of this video. I start by bracing the first post in place with a system of stakes, scrap wood, and clamps. This might not be the strongest way to brace a post, but it did allow me to make adjustments and get everything perfectly plumb, even though I was working alone. I need to get the first post permanently fixed in place before repeating this process on the second post. And this is where I decided to use a two-part post foam product instead of concrete. This stuff cures in just a few minutes. Plus, I don't have to mix heavy bags of dirty concrete. That's a win-win in my book. The instructions for this foam are really easy to follow, but I need to be honest with you here. I was secretly hoping for some crazy fast reaction that resulted in foam shooting out of the hole uncontrollably, but that didn't happen. However, it only took five to six minutes for the foam to grow to its final size. With the first post curing, I can move on to setting the second post. There are two things that you wanna take into account when doing this. First is, how far apart are the posts? I chose six feet. Second, and more importantly, is making sure the posts are aligned to each other and ensuring one post isn't twisted. To align the post, I tied a string to the first post. Next, I ran the string down the edge of the first post over to the second post. Finally, I made sure the string ran perfectly down the edge of the second post. This was to ensure it wasn't twisted. With the second post braced in place, it was time to add the foam. Also, I added one more batch of foam to each hole for extra stability. With both of the posts set in place, I moved on to adding a simple beam across the top of them. And this is where I avoided major injury. But first, I need to get the post cut to the same height so the beam will be level. To do this, I attach a laser level to the top of the shorter post. This cheap laser is typically used to line up pictures on a wall. Next, I mark the second post where the laser indicated. And to my surprise, this actually worked really well. And finally, with lines marked all the way around the post, I made cuts on each side of the post using a circular saw. This hand saw made quick work of the middle part of the post that the circular saw couldn't reach. Before setting the top beam in place, I decided to add a small detail to the bottom corner on each end. I set my circular saw to 45 degrees and used a speed square to make a straight cut to add this simple detail. Now all I had to do is figure out how to lift this 120 pound beam over my head and place it on top of the post without injuring myself. And this is where I would recommend recruiting some help. I almost dropped this beam right on my foot. That would have been really, really bad. After getting the beam centered, leveled, and squared, I attached it to each post. First, I screwed the beam to the post from the top down using some 10 inch structural timber screws. I put two on each side. Next, I decided to install some metal brackets in each corner. Not only do these look beautiful, they also provide additional support. These metal brackets are attached using Simpson washers that look like bolt heads and two inch Simpson screws. Everything you need is linked below. With the bracket clamped in place, I put the bolt head looking washer in the bracket hole and screwed everything together. This is a great simple way to add unique style to any outdoor project. Since simple is the theme, I decided to use pre-made kayak holders. These are outdoor rated, have protective foam cover, and include straps to hold the kayaks in place. I screwed the first holder in place using the included screws. Next, I used the laser to get the second holder perfectly level on the opposite post. Then, with two holders installed, I could test fit a kayak and determine where the upper set of holders should be installed. Finally, I carried these lines around to the other side of each post and installed two more sets of holders. 
And now it's time for you to be the judge. Did I learn my lesson? Was simple better for this project? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Wow, that was a lot of heavy, dirty work. By now, you're probably thinking about sitting by a nice warm fire, looking up at the stars while you enjoy your favorite beverage, dreaming of the next project you can make. So click the video that just popped up on your screen where I show you how to build a beautiful firewood rack that includes an unexpected bonus feature. And remember, you can build it yourself. Thanks for watching.